We're sitting here in the parking lot for trucks outside the Great Kanchanshi Mine in Sulwezi in Zambia. Sulwezi provides about a quarter of Zambia's copper output, nearly 200,000 tons per annum. To get this copper to international markets in places like India, China and other European destinations requires many trucks both moving copper out but also fuel and other essential items in to run the mine. The costs of so doing and the distances involved in a landlocked nation such as Zambia's are massive, nearly 1700 kilometers to the closest port, that of Baira in Mozambique, nearly 2100 kilometers to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and then nearly 2,300 kilometers to Volfus Bay in Namibia and 2,700 kilometers to Durban in South Africa. Not only are the distances massive, but the difficulties and the costs involved are too. For example, it costs upwards of $150 a ton to move copper from here to the port of Dar es Salaam. It takes as long as two weeks tying up transportation for a long period of time. And then the copper has to be warehoused in Dar es Salaam until a critical mass has been achieved to enable it to be shipped to those international markets. This is the question then facing us as we begin a route diagnostic from Sulwezi to Volfus Bay. Can ways be found to reduce the costs of transportation of critical goods in and out of Zambia, a landlocked nation in Africa. Do these relate solely to physical issues such as the condition of roads or do these relate to other issues around soft infrastructure such as customs and other border procedures? Can we find a way to move goods more cheaply in the interests thus of development in Africa? Although it is not the shortest, the route from Zambia to the coast via Warwish Bay is perhaps the most promising. According to the World Bank's container port efficiency rankings, Wolvish sits in 328th position out of 366 ports ranked. Lowly ranked by global stands, but faring better than regional competitors. Tanzania's Dar es Salaam is ranked 361 and Durban 364. Baira is at 270, but the route there through Zimbabwe or Malawi is even more fraught despite being shorter. It's not just about the port. The ease of moving goods by rail or road to and from the port is critical. Whereas the route to Da takes two weeks, for instance, Warvish takes just seven days, with a three-day turnaround on average at the port for the return trip. Thus, the cost per ton of a 34-ton load is around $130, compared to $170 to Da with the truck's waiting time costed around $350 per day. Not only could the port be more efficient, but the journey to Orvish could be even quicker, saving time and money, which will reflect in Zambia's competitiveness and investment. The journey pivots at Mongo in western Zambia, and both the route and the town are metaphors for Zambia's future path. You will change your side, thing, John. It is a tale of two roads. A, stone and it. a journey from Sulwezi to Mongu from the northwestern province of Zambia to the western province can really be divided into three stages. The first 200 kilometers is pretty bad tar road, especially from about 40 kilometers outside Sulwezi. Uh, and where you've got very large potholes straddling sometimes the entire width of the road and then you go on to a piece for the second 200 kilometers which uh, is dirt very well tended for well graded for the most part a bit rough in parts but actually you can maintain a higher speed on the dirt than you can on the tar and then when you get to Kahoma the last third which we're currently on which starts off on a terrible piece of tar road which you can see out the window in front of us which is really just a constant potholes uh, 
and a very large tow or sidewalk on the side of the road which a lot of people or shoulder where a lot of people ride on and uh, and that's actually better than riding on the road which we're trying to navigate at the moment um, and this has been going on for about 20 kilometers hopefully it gets better the average speed for much of the journey is a little more than 50 kilometers per hour Mongu is the capital of the western province of Zambia the epicenter of the Lhotse people who migrated here over 500 years ago and once the capital of the protectorate of Barotse land. It is today a centerpiece of cultural activities, particularly where the Lutunga or king migrates from the lower floodplains to higher ground during the rainy season in the Kuambuka ceremony. It's a key point on the road south between Solwezi and Volfus Bay, 600 kilometers from Solwezi, another 1,700 kilometers to go to Volfus Bay. About half of the road behind us is in poor condition, either dirt or very badly potholed. The road ahead of us we'll see tomorrow and beyond. The 300 kilometers from Mongu to the Namibian border at Shesheke Katimamlilo is on near pristine tar road. But here the challenges are more one of software. Even with pre clearance, the copper trucks can wait three days as the more than 200 vehicles clustered around the border post testify. Of course, this is nothing like the Congo, where the average journey time to Wolvish is nearly three weeks. The 17-day journey difference being the chronically chaotic border post at Kasumbalesa. This does not have to be this hard. A public-private partnership sustained by fair tariffs would help solve the hardware deficit. The software may be more difficult, since it is likely in the interest of officials to slow down traffic to create an economy of delay at the borders. Yet, there's no reason why, with pre-clearance, in an era of digitization documentation, a border post should be little more than a line on a map, as they are in much of Europe. Cues of trucks illustrate usually a deliberate dysfunction aimed at extortion rather than a chaotic operational system. We are now here in Volfus Bay in Namibia, the end of this part of the journey for the loads of copper cathode and anode which left Solwezi a week ago or three weeks ago if they came from the Congo. It's the next stop that will take them from here to markets principally in China, India and Europe. Now the trucks look for return cargo to begin the long journey back. Finding quicker and easier ways to import and export goods is imperative to changing the fortunes of Zambians, Congolese and indeed Southern Africans. Zambia's population has risen from just over 3 million at independence, for example, to 19 million today and is estimated to increase threefold by 2050 and to no less than 100 million people by the turn of the century. In Congo, the projections are no less spectacular and daunting. 15 million Congolese at independence in 1960, 90 million today, 194 million in 2050 and 362 million by the turn of the century, by which time the Congo would have risen from the 17th largest to the 5th most populous country worldwide. The population of the 14 nation SADC region will in less than three decades between now and 2050 have nearly doubled from 364 million people to 712 million. Reducing business frictions is critical to the competitiveness that will drive investment and the investment that will drive growth and the growth that will create jobs for a growing cohort of young people in Southern Africa. A 5 a.m. start from Mongu to Shesheke told its own story. The road was dotted in the dark with cyclists moving their heavy loads into town. The amount of energy expended by them and many others in simply getting by is staggering. Another route, a new path with less bureaucratic friction and better infrastructure will be a good start for Mongu as much as Zambia and the rest of the Southern African region. Jungle night, two hearts 
Amen.